Harry Potter and the Unnecessary Reboot Chapter 1 The Books That Wouldn't Die Mrs. Rowling of a giant castle in Edinburgh was proud to say that she was perfectly normal, thank you very much. She was the last person you would expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because she just didn't hold with such nonsense. She had the life she could only dream about when she was growing up. A castle, billions of pounds, legions of adoring fans, international recognition and acclaim. All she was missing was someone to fight. Then, everything changed when the trans nation attacked. Oh, sorry, that's the that's the wrong franchise, isn't it? That was my that was my Stephen Fry impression. <laughs> Hello loyal viewers and welcome to this Hey YouTube channel. I'm Bridget Empire, science and culture correspondent for the Daily Bloody Telegraph, the only newspaper in Britain that JK Rowling hasn't been openly praised in yet, and that's only because nobody in Nonce Body Towers has ever read Harry Potter. I know, I know, don't come for them. They've tried. They've tried. Dan here is still trying to get through the Fellowship of the Ring, which he started back in 1960, and he's never managed to get past the Council of Elrond, which is a shame, because the rest of the series slaps. Speaking of books that slap, in April 2023, HBO Max, sorry, no, that's the, that's the network's dead name, Max announced it had ordered a Harry Potter TV series. You know, that series of books that was successfully adapted into eight classic movies and a few not so classic ones before the author of the series went frothing at the mouth transphobic and decided she wanted to absolutely tank the good name of her franchise and lose a bunch of money for Warner Brothers besides. Given that merch sales for Wizarding World items have been dropping recently, it actually makes some grim sense that Warner Brothers is trying to bring back the franchise for another go around. Remind people why they love the story of Harry Potter and, you know, cash in again. The thing is, lots of people are quite attached to the movies already as they exist. And not only does yet another adaptation seem kind of redundant, but one of the things that really drove the fan base around Harry Potter to be as loyal as they were to the franchise was the inherent pull of the story of a misfit boy literally forced to live in a closet that is transported to a magical world where he's not alone anymore, where all of everyone is a wizard boy. A lot of the people that really identified with this story have since come out as some flavour of queer. And I don't know if Warner Brothers has noticed this, but Rowling's not exactly on good terms with the queer community right now. Yeah, I feel very attacked! I get their instinct to try and get new faces to the characters in Harry Potter to sell, what with all the major actors in the film franchise repeatedly making it clear that they completely disagree with Rowling's crusade leading her to be weirdly spiteful towards them. But I don't know what makes them think that hiring a bunch of teenagers with fresh faces will solve that problem. If there's one thing you can bet on with the younger generations, is that they're more okay with trans people than the boomers who sign off on these big corporate deals. What's to stop the same thing happening just all over again? Really, if they wanted to make money off Harry Potter again at the rate they used to, They'd be better off paying Rowling a huge amount of money to just shut the fuck up and quit Twitter. It'd probably do us some good to get off social media for a moment anyway, but no, we can't have nice things, and so Harry Potter's coming back for another trip back to our screens. With no enthusiasm left, with all the momentum completely gone out of the franchise, and with J.K. Rowling back as executive producer, no less, which I'm sure won't hurt the chances of people being able to separate her from the story at all. What with all the money that she'll be making and all the creative decisions she'll be able to influence. What frustrates me the most, probably, about this news, however, isn't the re-emergence of a franchise that could really do with just being allowed to rest for a bit until its author either de-radicalizes or at least says sorry for what she's done. But, well, it's kind of tragic that this is the road we're going down when HBO, sorry, Max, could, I don't know, get a new book? Like, I'm not meaning to be cheeky here. I'm a massive fan of science fiction and fantasy, like, and there are a metric ton of series out here that are 10 out of 10 smoke show baddies and have never been adapted once. Some of them have been adapted once. Some of them have not been adapted once. Some of them, I might be bored enough to say, 
and I think I will be. A better a Harry Potter. Right, don't don't come for me. Don't come for me. I'm a millennial. I'm a millennial. I am a millennial. I know. Boo, boo, burn the witch. But it's 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 true. I was a Harry Potter super fan when I was younger. You can find my like, don't, but you could probably, if you looked hard enough, find pictures of me covered head to toe in Harry Potter merch. I queued up for the books at midnight release. I wrote to Rowling and she wrote back multiple times. And yet here I am, someone who's read some more books and wouldn't you know it, there are other books. It turns, I, the, the, have you heard of the library? There are so many books there. Like there are books with similar settings, themes, characters, you know, everything you could want from Harry Potter, you can get pieces of somewhere else without supporting a rabid transphobe who's already swimming in money. Like, she doesn't need the extra support. So, Max... Boy, that feels weird to say. You can't just go around changing your name? What's your biological name, Max? Ugh. Anyway, so, Max. How about I help you out here? How about I go through a few books that might be fun to adapt instead of Harry Potter, eh? Wet your whistle, so to speak? There are tons of books out there. I, I certainly haven't read them all. But I've read a few of them, and there is more than one series, like, have you noticed? Since you don't seem to have noticed, I must implore you, in this here YouTube video, of all things, which apparently you're already watching, to consider some other books. Okay, so imagine your HBO, I mean Max, the place where you watch all the HBO series, but for some reason isn't called HBO anymore. I'm sure JK Rowling won't like that. Anyway, imagine you're them, and you want to make a show about a wizard school with a ready-made fan base, And one which has oh, even already had an adaptation under its belt from a major studio. But, and this, this is the important bit, one that people aren't fatigued of, and that doesn't have like a giant bigot raging at their helm currently making it look bad and ruining any percent, any good press you could possibly be getting, making derailing every press tour, you know, you, you get it, you get it. Well, what about, Max? You adapt The Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin, the book that Harry Potter has long been accused of ripping off. Yes, it has been adapted before, but never with the scope and budget that HBO, sorry, Max, has access to, and it's a story that deserves the space to breathe that you get with a whole series order per book. Unlike the first few Harry Potter books, which actually fit really neatly and nicely as movie adaptations, Le Guin is also famously based, which is another thing that Ursi has over Harry Potter, as well as the claim to have had the whole concept of a boy wizard school coming of age story first, and the lack of a prominent raging transphobic author. Yeah? Okay, no? No, not sold? Okay. Ursi, a bit too old for you, maybe. Okay, how about. How about the Scholomance novels by Naomi Novik? They're about a bunch of magical kids in a wizard school. They're much more YA orientated than the early Harry Potter books, which will be good because, you know, like a lot of people who grew up with Harry Potter as kids are now like old. And enough stuff happens in each one that they can make pretty nice series. Plus, the premise is different. So people who know and love Harry Potter could still watch it and get something different out of it, rather than just bathing in nostalgia for five minutes before realizing they've seen the story before and switching over to a different channel. You would think, actually, then Max would have learned this lesson already, since after Game of Thrones finished, not with a bang but with a whimper as it were, they quietly dropped their planned Long Night sequel, which would have had a lot less teeth with the way that Thrones ended, and instead, the next show set in Westeros that HBO aired was House of the Dragon, a George R. R. Martin novel adaptation, which is what worked the first time, but with a new and different story, which wouldn't be badly affected by the ending of Game of Thrones because it was a prequel. I'm sure someone at that meeting probably discussed just doing Game of Thrones again from episode one. Just start it all over and try and do it right this time. A good ending this time, please. But they would have probably been left out of the room because that's a stupid idea. Right? Right? That's a stupid idea. I would, however, suggest that this is also a stupid idea because it's basically the same idea. Especially when you have other books out there, books like Ursi and the Scholomance, that do something different people haven't necessarily seen before, but from the fa same familiar, comfortable setting. The Magical School. An entry point for people into a new world they can fall in love with. And listen, if you, if you really want to twist, like, I mean, really twist the definition of a magical school, 
fuck it, why not adapt the Lock Tomb series by Tamsin Muir? Gideon the Ninth, Harry the Ninth, and so on. Like, not they're not a wizard school. There's like a necromancy kind of weird academy thing. It's not. It's not even a real academy. But I just wanted to talk about it. It's it's great. Uh, <laughs> it already has a huge fan base, tons of cosplayers, fans speculating about how it's going to end. Like all the stuff you want from a franchise. A massive young queer following. Like basically half the shit that helped take Harry Potter from a book series about a young wizard into a global phenomenon. Except. This one is extremely gay, massively heretical, obsessed with death, and fucking brilliant. Seriously, if you take nothing else away from this video, listen to the audiobooks of the Locked Tomb series. The voice acting is genuinely stellar. I I love my weird death cult lesbian horde with like all my heart. And beyond that, there are absolute classics of the fantasy genre that just haven't been touched. To the point where, from where I'm sitting, it just looks like no one in Hollywood has any taste. Like, my absolute favourite book series of all time, and one that just happens to also have a really strong coming of age element, which is one of the things that really pulls people into Harry Potter, whether they realise it or not. One of the things that Harry Potter does best, in my opinion, are the stories of the Fitz and the Fool, the Farseer trilogy and their sequels, starting with Assassin's Apprentice, by the somehow still underrated Robin Hobb. I, I would kill for a faithful adaptation of the story of Fitz Chivalry Farseer and his beloved fool. I absolutely adore them. Like Fitz is one of those characters that I see people complain about on Reddit, but I think that's just because he's more realistic. Like, he's great. He's well-rounded. I just believe in him from start to finish. He makes stupid mistakes. He can be self-pitying. And you can see how these traits really affect his story and the story of the world around him. Like He starts off very unsure of himself, and even when he becomes like a boomery guy later on in life, it's very believable, and he loves his friends, and he still holds himself back, and oh, and ugh, mate, it's so good. There's there's a fucking like, there's a magic where you be bond with animals, which is like forbidden, and it's like a queer allegory thing, where like it's a forbidden, forbidden like part of yourself, and like, because the characters get like beaten for it and shamed for it, and like, he, may, he, may, he bonds with a wolf called Night Eyes, and I love Night Eyes. I love the bond between them. It's so nice. It's so lovely. And like the fool, the fool, the fool is the best. The fool's like this gender fluid pansexual jester who is just oh one of the best characters in fiction. Oh, he's, he's, it's, it's incredible. It's it's so good. <laughs> I would I would I adore them. I, I can't, I can't get enough. I really can't point to a better case of like characters driving the plot. This is like really rambly, but seriously, this is why I love fantasy, is this series. Like the way that the world fits in the full deals with the primary hero of this world. Being a bastard child, raised to be an assassin who never quite got over his inferiority complex and his abandonment issues, and how this affects the way the world develops around him as he tries to change it for the better. It's if I'm not selling it, just believe me, this is one of the best stories ever written. I, I love this series so much. I would absolutely get a tattoo of the Farseer crest, as ridiculous as that whole back tattoo of Dumbledore that was going viral a decade ago. And this series? It's critically acclaimed. Everyone knows it's rad as hell, and yet it still hasn't had its moment in the sun, the same way that Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones has. Like, even Wheel of Time has been adapted for TV multiple times, and that series is a fucking mess. You would think, from the way that people are talking about Harry Potter and this new Harry Potter show, that it's the only book series ever written, or at least, or at least the only story about wizards coming of age worth its salt. Really, it's not even the best book to tell the kind of stories that it does. It's pretty good, but there are others that do the same thing, and some of them are better, actually. And this is inherent. I love Harry Potter, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> if you like British fantasy with charming characters and morality tales that touch on the themes of Harry Potter better than Rowling ever did, there are tons of books in Terry Pratchett's Discord series. Pick them up, or watch their watch the TV show adaptations, Mort, Going Post, or Third, The Colour of Magic, any of them. There are tons, and they're almost all incredible. You don't have to look far to get a new book. There are thousands to choose from. And I promise you, if you keep reading, you will eventually find another book you like as much, or if not better, 
than Harry Potter, just probability-wise, at lower large numbers alone. Like, if there is enough of a thing, you probably didn't, like, read the best one the first time you picked it up, right? Like, when the first food you ever ate wasn't the best food of the world, like, baby food, you know, this, this is a bad, this is a bad metaphor, but... But, like, there are tons of books, there are, like, bookshops and, like, libraries? You can, you can get... You heard them, that the books are free! They're free! There's tons of books there, but you have more than seven! more than seven there are only seven harry potter books there are so many more books in a the library they've shelves and shelves of the bastards and some of them are even heartwarming heartbreaking and as likely to inspire you as any story about a boy wizard written by a transphobic billionaire so why not give them a try and thanks for watching hey everyone just a short one this week Things are very busy and I am struggling, struggling, struggling to stay afloat. Hey, if you like this video and you want to help me eat and sleep and not be sad, why not sign up to my Patreon for as little as one British pound a month or donate on coffee the one time donation. Subscribe, maybe. And if you sign up to my Patreon, not only will you get videos multiple days for everyone else, every single week what what a great deal anyway you also get your name read out at the end of each video just like these lovely people h diana mcmillan tweak caroline regalado jenny linsky alexandra lily jay peterson and bachera howard lott lara van loon naren neoscargen and joey cobalt i love you all uh a discord notification just came over my script but that's okay because i'm on the last sentence <laughs> God. I, I can't I can't thank you enough for all your help. That's from the heart. Um I'm not reading this anymore. Fuck this I have a little script at the end for this bit just in case I forget to do a call to action, but I've done it now. I can just say thank you all so much. Um I'm moving countries, it's gonna be a big fucking deal. I'm so stressed right now, my job is ending and I uh, debt. You know how it is. Capitalism is terrible. Anyway, you make my life so much easier, and I really, really appreciate you. Like, everything you do, can't thank you enough. You guys are the best. And if you want to join them, I will thank you as profusely as I've just thanked these lovely people. You can join them and get today's early videos. And if, eventually, I make enough from this to make it a job, then I'll open a Discord and we can just chat and shit. That'd be fun. Let's let's have fun together. That sounded bad. I mean fun, like literally fun. PG fun. Okay, right. See you later.